What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Yay! After last time's five hour recording session, I'm back. Something probably a little, a little more casual. Hmm. And we're just, yeah, we're just jumping in. You know, that's how this game goes when you just fucking jump in. Jump in, bruh. <laughs> Hopefully, it's not too poopy. I'm rendering and doing a whole bunch of other shit in the background, but it shouldn't be that bad. I mean, it's just a freaking book, so. Hmm, guess we better go. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Rin, you too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off, so Emmy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to get to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy or I bother asking what it is. Ew. As we arrive at my classroom, Emily gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, Rin in tow. I turn to enter the classroom to meet by the duel of Shizun and Misha. Oh god. Dot dot dot. Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles while she translates Shizun's latest rant. Well, we are pleased, nay, thrilled to see how well you managed to meet new friends and forge relationships, and with such a cutie too, Hachan. I think the last part was probably Misha. <laughs> dot dot dot. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden. Really? That's disappointing, Shichan. By Section 8 of the Code of Conduct laid out in the student handbook. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be your excuse, as we are feeling lenient. Da -da -da. Had the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the already mountainous volume of work which confronts us, the sole members of student council, and besides, you two are adorable together. Da -da -da. Therefore, considering this a formal warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future, at least when Shizun can see you, Hichan. This whole spiel is so patently ridiculous, I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions, and will strive to contain my vassal impulses which, I fear, impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and will do my best to make your lives easier in this matter in the future. At least, when Chizun's watching. This last line I deliver with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control over laughter. <laughs> well said, Hichan. Chuckling a little myself, we enter the classroom. Shut shade. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Matao again. So, it looks like we've assembled for the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like a like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Mattel smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to them smile naturally. <laughs> you really do have a knack for this, I think. Logical thought process, that is. I guess so? A scientist speaks with authority, Hazao. The answer is, yes, I do. When the world wants to know how it works, we tell it, even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, sure, but nobody's an expert on how the world works. If only because nobody can be sure, with no certainty, there are no experts. But we like to pretend, sometimes. There's some things we can be certain of, right? Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Mattel picks up a pencil and drops it. See? Still there. But well, it's good to check every once in a while. That's why you'll see, still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check and check and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hisao. The whole time I've listened feeling rather spellbound. Mattel seems to really be passionate about this stuff, I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How humans work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered, and depending on what I got into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think there's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. Shut a shade. Before we even realize it, an hour has gone by. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have another meeting tomorrow, or uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call it the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. Yeah. 
As I exit the classroom, I realize I don't really have anything to do tonight. Emmy and I didn't make plans, so I guess I'll go to the library. Beat's doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are so well worn, the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible if, for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care, I make my way to the main desk, where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She sells at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hisao. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular, I guess. I just didn't really feel like going back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're not if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me with something. Sure, what do you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant steps towards <laughs> steps forward while feeling distinctively unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku cat burglar. The what? Shh! The walls have ears, that's now. Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Er, uh, yeah? Well, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. Yeah, it was Kenji, dip. <laughs> I remember you saying something of that sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans closer, leans in closer, and if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. Found one of, one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I've been looking for. All there. I suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I've just success, suggested she walks around naked. Are you nuts? You can't know I'm onto him. He might go to ground and invade capture. Uh-huh. So what do you need my help with then? Yuko casts another glance around the library and leans in closer. You've got to spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know. Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. What constitutes suspicious, anyway? I mean, Kenji's a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wager he barely goes to clash. Much less sneaks into the library to pill for books. Still, what's the harm in saying yes? At the least, they'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that. No problem. Yuko straightens up and claps excitedly. Great! Now hurry up and talk about something else in case someone comes in. How's the school treating you? Er, pretty well, actually. I've been running in the mornings with... Emmy Ibarazaki, I still don't know. Ibarazaki, right? I'm gonna say Ibarazaki. Uh, yeah. How'd you know? I served you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you were going to run with anyone, it would probably be her. She looked pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings, and uh, we kind of started dating. Yuko claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great! I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? I even thought to myself when you walked in the Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Really? Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yup, I could tell that you wind up one of them, you know? I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course... Her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turned out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird was that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. Oh, that does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. Oh my god. I intend to try and calm her down further, but the... Both of us jump in surprise at the ringing suddenly coming from my pocket. Yuko sighs to steady herself as I pull the phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. <clears throat> Look at that phone. Wow! <laughs> Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God. I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this was the number would work or whether you'd pick up, and I can't... Well, there, Emmy. Slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Some things are terribly agitated, starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you stop by? Like now? Or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? My increasingly agitated state apparently starts saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay.